Now should work. Does it? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Maybe not so good. Uh, okay. So I, I will be talking about the two phases. Uh, one is the spin singlet a superconducting phase. Uh, the one is spin triplet. And I'll show that one is topologically trivial, while the other one uh, has zero energy boundary modes with fractionalized spin quarter at the edges. Then I'll show that when this is in the absence of an external field, then I'll apply a, an external magnetic field at the edges. And I will show that actually, even if I take a trivially topological phase, when I have a, when I apply, a, when I apply external field, So when I apply an external field, I can turn it into a topological phase. So in other words, the topological nature of a phase is determined by the interplay between bulk and boundary. It's not a pure bulk property. I discuss then the phase diagram as a function of the fields, and I'll show there is a, a structure of the Hilbert space uh, something that occurs that is called um, eigenstate uh, phase transition where the whole Hilbert space changes as a function of these external fields. As an interlude, I will talk about a, a system where instead of having external fields, uh, we attach condo impurities at the edges and I will show that three regimes occur. I'll go through that very quickly because I've given too many talks on that. So I need something newer. Uh, then, so this, uh, the superconductor is an example of what is con called symmetry protected topological phase. And another classification, uh, which the XXZ, the gap, at XXZ provides an example is what is called an SSB phase, a spontaneous symmetry breaking. However, I will show that the edge structure of both is very similar. So very quickly, uh, when we talk about one dimensional gap systems, uh, there is a classification when they are Without symmetries, they are topologically trivial. When they have uh, symmetries, then they fall either into the class of SPT uh, systems, which have unbroken symmetry, uh, short range uh, quant uh, entanglement, string order, protected edge modes, and degeneracies in entanglement spectrum. Uh, for 
spontaneous symmetry breaking, the typical Landau type system. We have broken symmetry, again, short range uh, entangled entanglements in the uh, quantum phase. So these are the two examples that I will study in quite detail. So a quick comment, this is not the Kitayev chain. Uh, the Kitayev chain, as we learned from Sedrakian uh, in a very nice tutorial, is a quadratic uh, superconductor P wave, and the superconductivity is induced in a sense by um, out from the outside. We impose the superconductivity by uh, giving the expectation value delta to C dagger C, uh, to C, C and C dagger C dagger. Uh, and it's not that the model generates it internally through its interaction. So here is the model I'll be studying. Uh, so I'll call it an intrinsic or charge conserving four fermion interaction. The Hamiltonian has left and right moving fermions and they interact via four fermion interaction, a uh, right, right and left, left. And there are two coupling constant, G parallel and G perp. So it's the type of a U1 a Turing model. If G a perp and G parallel are equal, then there is an enhanced symmetry and SU2, very often called the gross neveu model. And I will solve this model on an open line uh, with uh, open boundary conditions. So that means that if a right is moving, reaching the edge, it's reflected as a left. And if a left reaches the other edge, it's reflected as a right. So here is the phase diagram. It goes back into the 80s. So uh, when G parallel is positive, then the model has two uh, fixed points. One is here and the other one is here. And um, the system flows to strong coupling where it generates a mass gap or a superconducting order parameter from anywhere it starts in this region A, or if it starts in region A dagger where G perp is negative, it flows to a dual a fixed point, which is gapful. So a, as has been studied for many years, so the attractive interaction RG flows to strong coupling, the model has a very interesting pro property, the charge and spin separate. That is what allows the model to generate a mass gap without a breaking symmetry, which is not allowed in one dimension. It has gapless holons in the charge sector, which is decoupled from the spin sector. And we label uh, the phases according to the dominant instability. The, in other words, the slowest falling correlation function in the phase as a spin singlet superconductor is uh, this operator. And in this phase, it's the OSTS. Now the two phases are related by duality uh, omega, which a flips the sign of G perp and allows us to map in a unitary form the Hamiltonian with a G perp to a G minus G perp. So every point here is mapped to a point here, but the boundary conditions are not mapped. It's only the bulk part. So the boundary conditions are, as I said, a reflection at the edge edges. And what I will show is that uh, this phase is a spin, the spin singlet phase uh, has a non-degenerate ground state while the, in the phase A, while A dagger will have fractional charges. And these fractional charges 
are related to the fractionalization of Z2 symmetry. Z2 symmetry is the spin flip symmetry up down, which is formally built by Psi L uh, is mapped to, tau, uh, to sigma X Psi L, which just flips the spin and R is mapped to R with a spin flip. So this model was with open boundary condition was more recently studied by Erisberg and collaborators. Uh, we provided exact solution, which we are going to uh, allow us to study much further. Uh, and I will explain how. And as I said, this is an example of an SPT phase. So let me first do a quick semi-classical calculation. So if I bosonize the fermionic field, namely I express them in terms of bosonic field theta and phi dual field, this is a standard formula. The Hamiltonian be separates to charge and spin sector. In the charge sector, it becomes a Luttinger liquid, while in the spin sector, it becomes a sine Gordon model with a cosine term. And the relation between the parameter in the sine Gordon and the fermionic language are well known and studied and written down here. In terms of the bosonic fields, the number of particles is given by the integral over the charge field, while the spin is given by the integral over the spin field. And the open boundary condition that were imposed on the fermions are translated in the bosonic language that phi c at minus l is zero, while phi c at plus l is given by square root of pi over two n, while the spin part is given again in terms of the total spin, and there is a difference between the left and the right, which determines the total spin of the system. And notice this look very unnatural. Typically in the sign Gordon, people have studied, of course, with boundary conditions, but rather with Dirichlet boundary conditions. These are not the natural thing you would do in the bosonic language, but these are translated from the fermionic language. And they will be responsible to what, uh, to the question. So in the semi-classical limit of this model, when beta goes to zero while ho holding M not fixed, we are in this part of the phase diagram. And then a, the low-lying excitations are controlled by minimizing the potential. So in the ground state configuration, ah, I should have said a very important thing. When we bosonize it, notice that there is a number here, chi. Chi is plus minus one, depending on the sign of G perp. So if it, it is plus one in the A phase and minus one in the A dagger, in the A hat phase. Okay, so when in the trivial phase, when chi is positive, uh, the ground state is of the con has the values uh, phi n is n times two pi over beta, which minimizes the cosine. While uh, if chi is negative, it's n plus half uh, two pi over beta to minimize the minus cosine. So it's easy to see that when chi is negative, there is a mismatch between the values in the ground state, for example, this line and this line, and where we are locked to by the boundary conditions, which are this line or this line or this line, which means that close to the edges, the configurations have to veer off from the ground state value into the boundary value. And there are four ways of doing it. I can go from the ground state up or down on the right, again on the left, either up or down. And when I integrate now 
the change, uh, the spin in this configuration, let's say from minus L over two to deep into the bulk, I get a quarter, which is surprising, plus minus quarter, plus for this, minus for this. So at the edges, it looks like we have quarter modes. So the spin has fractionalized. And Kesselman and Berg have verified this doing DMRG. So how valid is this conclusion? So the, really the calculation was done in the very anisotropic limit. Remember, I took beta goes to zero in order to dominate the configuration semi-classically. But really, we want to have to study the model in this regime where quantum fluctuations are enhanced. So are the, are the results still valid? And what we did is to solve the model exactly using the beta ansatz, which allows us to get all the eigenstates, including the ground state and the excitation, and ask whether uh, these results that we got are not uh, destroyed by fluctuation, by long range fluctuations of the other modes. Particularly that this model is an example, not of a gapped uh, SPT, but a gapless SPT, because uh, in addition to the gap mode, we have a gapless mode which decouples in the bulk, but couples at the edges. So the beta ansatz, I will not give the detail. It, when you solve it, you translate it to a set of algebraic equations uh, where the modes that you need to solve for are the lambda alphas, which are called uh, spin rapidities or beta rapidities. And uh, what we show, and the way you classify the system is by choices of integers. So what you have to do is find. So uh, you choose you, what you have is to identify what configurations of integers gives you the lowest energy. This is the ground state. And then by varying the integers from the ground state configuration, you can classify all excitations. So what I will show is that the boundary, so here I have the bulk term and I have the boundary term. And I will show the fact that the boundary term has here this integer chi, which can be one or minus one, leads to a dramatic change in the ground state configuration. So solving the equation, solving the equations. Sorry. So solving the equation in the phase A, where the spin singlet superconductivity, we find a unique ground state uh, and the singlet. However, solving it in the spin triplet uh, phase with a superconducting phase, we find that there are four phases. There is an SZ equals to plus minus half, and that is when all these parameters are real, lambda real. And then we find two more solutions, which are singlet, which are associated with edge modes. One, one edge mode is when lambda is equal plus minus half, and another one when it's uh, shifted. In other words, what we find is that the, in the triplet phase, we have two degenerate ground state with spin plus minus half and two singlets. So we interpret these states as arising from edge king state, which have fractional spin uh, SZ plus minus quarter, plus minus quarter on the left, plus minus quarter on the right. 
and we assume that there is an operator acting an edge genuine quantum operators whose eigenstates there are something that i will re-examine in a minute so the class the hilbert space of these edge kings is now classified by the total spin left and right and the two states with sz equals to zero are generated by quarter minus quarter or minus quarter quarter so quarter minus quarter or the other way around and the two states with SZ a plus minus half are quarter quarter minus quarter minus quarter. So this is a DMRG, a calculation which verifies that we have here a spin density localized at the edges and fits very well with the quantum calculation. But we have to ask whether these are indeed sharp quantum objects and there is corresponding quantum operators so eigenvalues there are or only spin accumulations at the edges so the typical way of doing it is to study the variance namely whether sz minus a quarter square a uh, which can be calculated via dmrg is sharp and going to zero as l goes to infinity which uh, was carried out by the our group and indeed it satisfies th this criterion so we can indeed uh, argue that these are indeed quantum sharp objects at the edges we also uh, to make sure that this is indeed an spt phase uh, ask them to calculate the degeneracies de in the entanglement spectrum which come out uh, beautifully however uh, to our surprise also when you do the same type of calculation in the trivial phase you find degeneracies so this is probably not a very sharp criterion and you have to resort to more checks okay now i'm coming to the main part the main half of the first part yes it's exponential okay. with the size uh, yes the question was whether is a uh, the, the difference between them goes to zero with the size exponentially or power like and it goes exponentially that is what the variance essentially checks yes but there is correction coming from a uh, the charging energy which is of one over l mm -hmm. one over l correction but that comes from the charge sector because there is a gapless sector which are the charge the holons which decouple sorry exactly just a okay so now we ask the following question uh, what happens if we apply a magnetic field at the edges what i want to argue is the what, what was an trivial phase namely the spin singlet was trivial when we had a uh, open boundary conditions now when we are going to apply magnetic field at the edges uh, i will argue that it becomes topological so in other words whether a system is topological or not topological is not only a bulk at least in one dimension but a combined uh, effect of bulk and boundary Yes, but it, they go to, inf I take the infinite volume limit. Yes. Uh, it matters, but in a trivial way. Now, in, of course, when you do DMRG, you see the effects very clearly. But in our calculation, when you take a, in other words, 
it would go into the quantum number n that I calculate, for example, which is the integral of the Lattinger liquid phase, but not in the spin bulk where the superconductivity occurs. Yeah, but in a controllable, exactly. Okay, so the model, if one applies a magnetic field uh, or twist fields, as I've written here, the model is still remains integrable and we can control it in a very precise way. Now, remember that the model has the Z2 symmetry. Under the Z2 symmetry, uh, the boundary condition, the boundary fields are mapped, B left and right goes to sigma X, which is the spin fleet B sigma X, which, so the parameter epsilon that uh, here, here is epsilon L, which characterizes the left side. Here is epsilon R, which characterizes the right side. Uh, the mapping, the spin flip mapping corresponds to epsilon goes to minus epsilon. So what, as a result, you see there are only two values of epsilon which are consistent with the Z2 symmetry. Either epsilon is zero, and this corresponds to the open boundary condition, and the, there are no fields, or epsilon is equal to pi over two, which corresponds to epsilon being a, a fixed point at pi over two, and this corresponds to a field acting on it. Oops. So this corresponds to this field acting on it. So what we see then that by applying a field, I can flip the sides. So these two values, zero and pi over two are a eigenvalues a of a Z2 and they are RG invariant parameters. And for these values, indeed a, the edges, have zero energy. But if I move away from those values, then uh, the epsilon prime measures the amount of moving away. And I will have now a not zero edge modes, but mid gap modes, namely the edge modes will acquire energy, but it will be below the mass gap. So the, this deviation, the edge modes are no longer symmetry protected and no longer zero energy modes. But remember, I have this duality symmetry, which maps one phase to the other. So before I was here with open boundary condition, the blue was the trivial phase and the red here with G perp negative was the topological phase. If I act with the duality transformation, the topological, now the spin singlet phase becomes topological while the spin triplet becomes trivial. So we can map phases back and forth. And what, what I will now study is the deviation in the spin singlet phase with open boundary con with the dual open boundary conditions and i will study how they deviate from the zero values so what let me look at the phase diagram here i apply magnetic field on the right edge modes on the left edge modes so here in the absence of a magnetic field the model is still topological and the phases are and the energies are zero. When I begin to move away, the um, edge modes acquire energy. And then when they reach a critical value, they melt into the bulk. In other words, the, the value reaches the value M and they become part of the bulk spectrum and disappear from the edge. And as a result, I have very, uh, this, a phase diagram 
and the number of mid gap uh, states in the region A, for example, here is three, then it is in the, uh, in the B, it is two, and in C, both sides have melted into, uh, have leaked into the um, continuum and disappeared from the spectrum. So I can analyze now each region separately. Let me think about the A region where the epsilon primes are less than one. So I have a, I, I have spin half in each case, which is below a, the mass gap. In this case, what we find is that I have only the minus one half XI, a ground state remains gapless while the singlet singlet prime and the plus half become gapped and the energies by which they become gapped is given here by this expression that m left and m right are given by the mass gap times sine pi over two epsilon which gives the deviation so you see when it reaches pi it becomes equals to m and leaks into the bulk for epsilon less than one it's going to be a mid-gap state so the ground state uh, of the minus half, so now the edge state split, the minus half still remains with a zero. On the right, I'll have, if I have epsilon R and epsilon L, I'll have MR and ML, while the plus half now has combined energy and only the minus half remains a zero energy mode. And we can associate to this now uh, operators that create and annihilate the particles. So for example, if I start with the ground state, which is minus half and add a fermion to the left, it will not go into the bulk because it has a lower energy zero mode. In other words, psi dagger up added to the left will turn the state into a singlet. Similarly here, psi dagger up acting on the left side will turn it into a singlet. Or if I add particles to the left and to the right, I'll get a plus half a state at the edges. So I can reproduce these processes by introducing creation operators, a dagger to the left and right, which are acting on the ground states, minus half or a, and creating the various processes that I described. And the effective Hamiltonian then is very simple. It is just a, a quadratic Hamiltonian with ML depending on the deviation or on the imposition of the gauge field. So as a result, we'll have various towers in the Hilbert space. We'll have the towers that we built, a, for example, uh, let, let me describe it here. So here I have a tower of states built on the ground state. Here I have tower of states built on MR. Or remember, MR is below the mass gap or on ML or on ML plus MR. Now, if I keep changing the magnetic field, these will uh, leak into the... Um, continuum and will disappear. And then I will have only one tower in the C phase. So this is an example of what is called an eigenstate phase transition where the full spectrum, typically when we talk about phase transition, we think about a, the ground state, the change in the ground state and the low lying eigenvalues around the ground state. When we talk about a, eigenstate phase transition, we ex examine how the whole structure, the structure of towers built over the various uh, eigen uh, modes, how it changes. And we have a very interesting phase transition taking place as a function of these external fields. Let me skip this and go to the interlude. So, I wanted now to think about a model where instead 
of having external fields, I have now a quantum upper, a, a quantum spin. So this is nothing but a condo spin coupled to a superconductor. Again, the model is integrable. And the kinetic energy, left, right movement. Okay. And this is the interaction term, and this is the coupling to the spin. And again, we have here open boundary conditions. We tried also to solve this model, not with open boundary condition, but put here magnetic fields, but we have not been successful thus far. So, but instead of having a magnetic field, now we have a fluctuating quantum spin half, a condo. And what we are studying here is the condo effect in the presence of superconductivity in one dimension. And the model is integrable for any coupling J, which is the condo coupling, and coupling G, which generates the superconductivity in the bulk. And as you can imagine, there is going to be a competition between the two types of non-perturbative effect. If TK is very large compared to the gap in the superconductor, we'll have a condo phase. If they are of the same order of magnitude, uh, then we'll have what is called the YSR or Shiba phase. And if TK is very small compared to delta, then we'll get an unscreened phase. Actually, I'm lying here a little bit because TK is generated only in this regime, in the Kondo regime. Uh, in the Shiba phase uh, and in the unscreened phase, there is no Kondo effect and no TK. What we have then instead, what we have is these three different phases. Here in the phase, which is the condo phase, J is very large compared to 2J. A renormalized condo effect takes place. It's not only the condo, but it's renormalized by the quantum interaction in the bulk. And TK takes different values. In the YSR phase, what happens is that the condo impurity binds an electron to it, and in this part it is screened, and here there is a first order phase transition where it becomes uns unscreened and connects to a fully quantum unscreened phase if J is very small compared to, to G. Uh, the quantity that determines uh, where the phases are located is a renormalization group invariant combination of these couplings. Remember, all these couplings run under RG. J and G are not a RG invariant. When we change the cutoff, they run. But this combination D that I've written down here uh, in terms of J and B, where B is this combination, is RG invariant. And when uh, we have, and, and we, we alternatively use D or A, depending whether it is real or imaginary. If it is real, it's D. If it's imaginary, I just pull out an I and call it A. Then this diagram tells us where the phases are located. And we can calculate all very nicely all the properties, density of states and a magnetization in the various phases. We can also have two super con uh, two impurities at either edge. Um, so up here, uh, one here and one here. Now the model is integrable in t with three independent parameters. G, which tells me about the strength of superconductivity uh, and J, J right and J left, which I combine into two RG invariant AL and AR, which characterize the interaction on the left and on the right. And again, I get a very uh, interesting phase diagram. In particular, I didn't finish. <laughs> okay. In particular, a 
what we find that we don't understand why that if AR and AL are equal to one, we get a supersymmetric algebra, whatever that means. Okay, part two in three minutes. Ah, quite. Okay, so when you do what you find also very similar structure in the symmetry broken phase of the XXZ model and my tough chairman demands that I stop for questions. So any questions? Oh, okay, I'll go to the end. Okay. Uh, conclusions. So we studied the intrinsic charge conserving superconductor. We identify topological phases. Uh, we can show that we can induce the topological phase by applying boundary fields. Uh, and we found a plethora of mid gap phases. We discussed the condo superconducting combined system. Again, we identified a, it's interesting because in three dimension, if you study a, the condo superconductivity system with BCS, you get only the YSR phase. Here you have full three phases as opposed to um, the situation. And then we got a phase diagram of fractionalized edge modes in the Heisenberg chain and various boundary aspects which are common to spontaneous symmetry broken system and the uh, SPT, symmetry protected, which are different classification. So there are a lot of things to do. For example, if we generalize it to SUN, instead of Majorana edges, we get, we expect parafermionic edge modes which would be very interesting to store an, a, information in. And we can couple, interesting question is how to couple wires at the edges and propagate the information. And there are some other questions that I cannot explain now. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah, thanks for the great talk. Um, maybe if you can explain a better uh, more about the Shiba versus non Shiba. So if I if I just uh, think of different phases by uh, the the difference in the magnetic in the susceptibility with respect to the local magnetic field. Suppose I couple field uh, to a local spin. Yes. Right. And ask uh, about uh, whether it's Kiri Weiss or or what is yeah. Power, right? So so. The susceptibility yeah. changes from. Yeah, I appreciate it, and, but it changes once or twice. It it, it exp changes continuously here, crosses over to this, and co it changes everywhere. No, uh, I'll re rephrase. So for for three D, okay. I mean, if there is a superconductivity, in some sense, there is no quantum because, well, as you know better than me, yeah. uh, basically uh, the, the local spin may be not screened. Right. Well, or, it's a... or screened. Yeah. And then it just expels like, the particles that goes to infinity. That's right. Okay. So there is basically one transition when you crank up interaction strings. Yeah. Right. So now you're saying that here is not one transition. That uh, two... these are not phase transition. These are smooth. Okay, it's crossover. It's smooth so is it, crossover. Is it still one phase except, except at this point. So is there still one phase transition? Yes. From Curie Weiss to, With, to within, Yes. Within the YSR phase, there is a first order phase. Fine, maybe we call it whatever, but I mean, it's, yeah. it's one transition from Curie Weiss to Pauli. And yes. Okay, yeah, thanks. Yeah, that, that's, thanks. Yes. Okay, we have time for one more question. In these towers of states you were talking about uh, before yes. know, the two phases. So are those states uh, protected in some way or, yes. for example, stable against perturbations that would break integrability? 
It's a very good that question. The and, the, and the answer is yes. We examined this question for the XXZ where we added next nearest neighbor, which breaks integrability and it's stable. Now, of course, de depends how violently you break the symmetry, but not, not integ inter integrability per se gives you access to it, but it's not the reason that it's not. Okay. Uh, are there any questions online? I don't think so. Okay, so let's thank Natalie again.